Yo, what is up everybody? Today we're going to be taking a look at the video game adaptations for Sylvester Stallone movies. Sly is one of the biggest action heroes of the 80s into the 90s. Had a lot of films that got video game adaptations, many of which weren't that good, but I want to talk about five today that I think are genuinely worth playing and worth your time. We're talking Cliffhanger, Demo Man, Rambo, and Rocky. Let's get into it, guys. I hope you enjoy this one. Here we go. So I've been kind of deep diving with these Stallone games for the past few days over on Twitch. We've done a couple days of like Stallone marathoning pretty hardcore. And this is the first one that I wanted to talk about, partially because it was one that I was really familiar with already. Since having done these marathons, I actually have come to the conclusion that this is really the only good version of this game. So I do recommend this one with some caveats, but specifically that is going to be the Sega CD version of Cliffhanger. And I say specifically this version, because there are quite a few versions of this game. If you guys aren't aware, pretty fun movie. Actually, I saw it for the first time a couple years ago and really enjoyed it. This is a movie that came out in 1993. It was kind of in that era where there were a lot of different pieces of hardware getting licensed games like this. And this came out on many different platforms. And I think a lot of people know the notoriously bad NES Game Gear Game Boy version. Not very good. I don't recommend any of those versions. We got to play some of those on the marathon and it just to me hit home why this version is so much more impressive. Now again, I specifically recommend the Sega CD version. For those that don't know, actually the game that is contained here is mostly the same game that we got on the Genesis as well as the Super Nintendo. And this is why I like a lot of these Sega CD releases because they took that game and went, okay, what can we add to that to make it an interesting Sega CD game? And so essentially you get the Genesis in Super Nintendo version, but they inject the these extra sequences, much like if you've played Batman Returns on the Sega CD, kind of a similar thing there with the driving sequences. For this, they decided to add some snowboarding sequences. If you guys seen the AVGN video about Cliffhanger, you probably remember that sequence. I'm here to say, honestly, I really like the snowboarding in this. I think the devs kind of knew what was up because there are actually cheat codes in here, not only for 99 lives and extra continues, which you will probably need in in order to get through this, but you can actually just turn off the beat em up sequences entirely. You can disable them without any issue and only play the snowboarding levels, which is actually how I prefer to play this game. And you might be thinking, you are a masochist, and maybe I am to a degree. The snowboarding sequence is very hard. Again, it was developed specifically for the Sega CD version to kind of show off what the Sega CD could do with the, specifically the scaling functionality. Much like Mode 7 on the Super Nintendo, the Sega CD added a lot of that functionality to the Genesis and could do some pretty cool stuff. And while it is a brutally hard sequence, I do think the scaling is very cool. It has a great sense of speed. And when you actually are able to get through it, there's a pretty significant sense of accomplishment. Every time I get through this, I got to pat myself on the back a little bit because it does require a lot of focus, concentration, effort, but it is very satisfying if you get into the rhythm of it and really start to play well. So that's that's the reason I recommend this game. It's also a very cheap Sega CD game. You can get this for under 20 bucks complete. And it's the only version of Cliffhanger that I think is interesting in any capacity. So there you go, Cliffhanger on the Sega CD. All right, next up, we've got Demolition Man. And there are two versions of the game across four platforms, which we'll get into here. And I can honestly give you guys some really good news. Both versions are very, very good, like extremely good, which is excellent. I always prefer to say that than, you know, go, eh, that version's not great. Both of these are really good, which means any version that you find, you know, out in the wild at a thrift store or at a game store or maybe at a convention, if you see it and you're willing to pay the price, unfortunately, the prices have kind of skyrocketed on these a little bit. I think people not only are just fans of Demolition Man, the movie, it's kind of become a cult classic. I think it's a phenomenal movie myself. I think a lot of that has raised the prices as well as word spreading that these are actually really, really good games for the era. But the first one is one that unfortunately I don't own yet. I would love to but i've got i've got a disc here we've got demolition man on the sega cd honestly this is probably one of the best 16-bit run and guns that i've personally played not only is the gameplay just super tight super responsive super satisfying 
really rewarding, just fluid, really good action. Also, the visuals are phenomenal in this game. This is one of the most gorgeous 16-bit games I think I've ever played, and I've played a lot of really good-looking 16-bit games, so I don't say that lightly. I think this game is phenomenal, not only in terms of its core gameplay loop, but also the visuals, the presentation. Obviously, the Sega CD version is enhanced with some FMVs from the movie, and you also get a CD quality soundtrack, which really is a fantastic soundtrack, and I think they pulled some of the music from the movie. Sounds phenomenal. Just all around, this is a really great package. There's really great level designs here, a lot of variety, so especially some of the later ones, like you're in a cavern and you're riding these crazy zip lines down this like seemingly endless cavern. It's absolutely wild, a lot of fun, and again, I cannot recommend it enough. It is a challenging game. Unfortunately, the easiest difficulty does lock you out from the last couple missions. I have yet to really master this game on the higher difficulties. It's one of my bucket list things to do. One of these days I'll get there, but yeah, I cannot recommend it enough. If you can get past the slightly inflated price tag, I mean, we're talking like Genesis and Super Nintendo versions are like 80 bucks complete. You can get the loose carts for a little cheaper. Sega CD version complete is going to run you like 120 plus easy. So it is expensive, but I genuinely think it is one of the best games of its era, not only for movie licensed games, but just games in general. Can't recommend it enough. If you thought I was gushing over that other version of Demolition Man, let me tell you guys, this is a game that I have thought about doing a whole separate video on. And one of these days I probably will, because I think this is a magical game. It distills what the system it was on was kind of all about. And unfortunately it is locked to that system, but I would die on a hill for this game. I think it is fantastic. I think more people deserve to know about this game and to play it. And that is specifically the 3D version of Demolition Man. And like I said, this is locked to this system, which kind of sucks, right? Because the 3DO is not exactly an easy system to collect. The systems are getting up there. They're old. They're starting to become faulty. I've had issues with my disk drive on mine. I've replaced it with an ODE. I get there's a big barrier to entry here. 3DO emulation is not very good, but I'm telling you, if you have a way of playing this somehow, some way, I think it is really fun. And again, it distills everything that makes the 3DO, I think, an enticing proposition. This came out in 1994, I believe, this version. And, you know, it's still fairly early for 3DO, although the 3DO did not have a very long life. But this essentially takes every strength of the 3DO and really maximizes it, I think. It is a multimedia game, lots of FMV footage, not only from the movie, but you also get some brand new footage of Sly Stallone himself on a blue screen, specifically for this game and it's so magical it is so cheesy too like it's clearly like they filmed it at virgin interactive offices on this simple blue screen set it just enhances the charm although i will say they actually weave these sequences together pretty nicely they'll take scenes from the film and then cut right to a blue screen shot and then they'll go into the gameplay and it's all like actually really seamless for the era but essentially you do get let's get into the gameplay you do get a multi-genre affair here it is very arcade like which I really like. I'm a big fan of arcade games. So for me, that is an absolute bonus. You get multiple different gameplay styles here and mainly four. The most you're going to see in this game is the light gun shooter sequences. That takes up most of the runtime. I will say there is more to it than it initially seems. You don't have to worry about reloading. And there are certain scenes where you have to hit very specific objects that actually are basically objectives that continue the game forward. So there is more to it than maybe meets the eye. I know a lot of gallery shooters seem kind of like you know you play it for a few minutes and you're done but this actually does have some strategy and some pretty significant you know kind of challenge elements which i really like especially on the higher difficulties the second sequence you get in this game uh there's a few fighting sequences and those are by far i would say the weakest unfortunately it plays kind of like a discount janky really stiff mortal Kombat. to me it's charming you know they don't take very long there's only a few of them so i will admit the fighting sequences are definitely the basically the achilles heal of this game. I think the other parts really more than make up for it. And next we get some first person shooter action and there's two of these levels and they're actually pretty long. I gotta say, I do like the radar you have in this sequence. It reminds me a lot of like, if you played Alien Isolation, the radar that you have in that. And like Aliens, the James Cameron film, I'm sure they pulled from that a little bit. The, the levels are very labyrinth-like. The way the game's designed, you're expected to follow Simon 
Phoenix. That's kind of the idea. He's a little yellow dot on the map and eventually you're supposed to find him and then he'll take you to the exit. But what they don't tell you is he takes a really roundabout way through these labyrinthine levels. He does not go straight to the exit. He takes his sweet freaking time. And then the last style of gameplay we get, and there's only one level of it, which is kind of a shame, but there is a driving sequence where you are Sandra Bullock driving the car. It's pretty, pretty neat to see the 3DO do kind of 3D graphics like this with a bunch of cars, you know, all these buildings scrolling by you. Now, yes, the frame rate, once again, like the FPS sequences are a little rough. You know, the 3DO ironically wasn't that good at rendering 3D. It really, devs had to push it pretty hard to do that. So the fact that they got it running as well as they did, I think is a testament to the devs of this game. Again, I you just, everything about this game oozes. The devs were having fun and enjoying their jobs and just loving life. Like it comes through on this game, which I think is why I love this game so much. I cannot recommend it enough. Any way you can play this, if it means emulating it, if it means like bumming a 3DO off somebody else, if you happen to know somebody that owns one, or if it convinces you to buy a 3DO, I genuinely think if you like this style of early 90s multimedia, multi-genre interactive experience, it's worth checking out. 100%. I can't recommend this game enough. Also, I'd love to know down in the comments if you'd like to see a full video breakdown of this game because I would love to take a deep dive in this. But yeah, Demolition Man on 3DO. One of the best. All right, and next up, guys, we are gonna talk about Rambo. Unfortunately, this is one that I didn't really get to showcase live on stream. We did play the NES Rambo game, which is kind of notorious for being, honestly, I think people consider it a bad game, but it more so is just kind of cryptic and hard to follow than anything else. It's very easy to get confused in that level design. So I can't really recommend that one, but the one I would recommend, and I wish I had gotten to stream this, we just kind of ran out of time on our marathon, but that is Rambo 3. On the Genesis. Now, this is a port of an arcade game by Sega, and you can tell it was done by Sega and that they really wanted to push how well the Genesis could do arcade ports because this is a phenomenal arcade port. I was actually blown away by how good this was for a semi early Genesis game. Once again, we're dealing with some run and gun action, right? It seems to be a Stallone staple at this point, and it's a really solid top down run and gun. You get a little bit of mission variety. There are only six missions, so it is a little bit short. But honestly, I think it's the perfect length. It's got a lot of replay value too. I think it's super satisfying. It also reminds me of the Predator 2 game on Genesis, which may be spoiler for a future Schwarzenegger games possibility video. But yeah, I really enjoyed this one a lot. The mission variety, like I said, was quite nice. There were some sequences where you had to rescue like a prisoner of war from a camp. There were sequences, probably my favorite were actually kind of the late level sequences where you get through like blowing up a wall in a fortress and you basically hit a boss section and a lot of them are like Apache helicopters and you got Rambo's bow and you get to charge it back up and it makes this amazing charge up sound. You get to shoot these like wild bomb arrows at the planes. <laughs> Super satisfying, just all around a really great presentation on this game. It's become a new Genesis favorite of mine, so I highly recommend it. Like I said, the only downside is it is a little on the short side, but what can you expect from an arcade game? Luckily, it does give you unlimited continues until the final mission, which is kind of a bummer, but what can you do? I think despite maybe the short runtime and the fact that it's an arcade port, I think it's it's phenomenal. It shows why the Genesis was so much better than the NES at the time and it really holds up, stands up on its own. Definitely recommend Rambo 3 on Genesis. And the last game I have to recommend for y'all tonight is the Rocky game on Xbox. Now, this is another one that I think is a little notorious. AVGN did a video on game glitches and prominently featured this game and got some really crazy bugs in his video, which I have not seen anyone else recommend. Replicate. I was not able to replicate it myself. I am here to say that this game is actually really good. I think people look at that video and assume, man, this must be like a buggy mess of a game. I just think James Copy was like really messed up. I don't, I don't know what happened or how else to explain it, but I played the Xbox version. I had zero glitches whatsoever, and it turns out it's actually a really, really fun boxing game. Now, I should preface by saying that I haven't played a whole lot of boxing games across the generations. It's not really something I'm severely into, by any means, but this one actually took me off guard. I do enjoy the Rocky films, although I haven't seen all of them. That's something I need to fix. 
but this game actually does a really good job replicating what m makes the movies great, the essence of the films. And it even has a movie mode as its main kind of story mode where it takes you through Rockies one through five. In fact, it's pretty funny when you boot the game up, it gives you basically an advertisement for the Rocky one through five DVD box set. So if you're wondering why we got a Rocky game in like, you know, 2003, that's why they were selling those DVDs. I can't fault them though. We got a really fun game out of this. I will say, it is pretty challenging. I was warned that that would be the case. And I think if you set it to easy, which I did do, you might start playing and go, man, this is really not challenging at all. I probably barreled through about 80% of this game with like no issues. I felt like I was just absolutely crushing it the whole time. But I will warn you, I do think lowering the difficulty is important because you'll get about 80% through toward the end of Rocky IV, specifically the, uh, the Ivan Drago fight. And the difficulty will hit you like a ton of bricks. It is insane how much the difficulty ratchets up, but I was able to get through Drago. Unfortunately, I didn't get all the way through Rocky 5 and finish the game, but I mean, I got most of the way there. One of these days, hopefully I'll get the win on it. But yeah, overall, it was a really fun experience and it has really nice sense of progression in terms of how you upgrade your Rocky. <laughs> I was going to say upgrade your character, but you're upgrading Rocky. One of the funniest things about this game too is because you're going through the films in the top corner where it says your name, it'll say like Rocky 1, Rocky 2, Rocky 3. And we were joking in the stream. It's like, when are we getting like Mecha Balboa? Because, you know, it's like kind of reminds you of like Godzilla naming schemes. But like I was saying, the, the upgrading of the stats is quite fun. You do these little mini games and you have five or six different stats that you can upgrade, you know, strength, stamina, determination, that kind of thing. And each one has its own little kind of mini game that you play between the fights. And a lot of them are actually really engaging for like what are essentially kind of simple little mini games. You know, you have one where you're basically matching the combo that they give you on screen with punching gloves. There's one with a punching bag where it gives you a whole list of combos that you have to complete before the time runs out. There was one where you do sit-ups and you gotta like, tense up your abs so that you're building up your strength. Just really clever way to do these little upgrade mini games, and it went a long way to break up kind of maybe whatever monotony could happen in the actual fight. So overall, really great game. There is also a sequel, Rocky Legends, which I have not played yet, but I definitely want to check out now that we've played this first Rocky game. I can honestly recommend it. Just throw out what you know about the AVGN and just play it for the non-glitchy mess that it honestly is. I think it's a lot of fun. And guys, that'll do it for us today. Thank you so much for watching five Stallone games that I genuinely can recommend. Now, I did not get to everything in my marathoning here. There are some games I missed, although I don't think I missed too many that are like really excellent. You'll notice we didn't talk about any of the Judge Dredd games because I really can't recommend any version of that game. But yeah, that gives you a good overall view of maybe some of the Stallone games that are worth checking out. Again, if there's anything I missed that you think is actually a really solid game, let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to try more of these. Maybe we'll do a follow-up video. I also teased earlier, maybe we'll do a, a Schwarzenegger Games video. I think that could be quite interesting too. But thank you guys for watching. Take care, everybody, and I will see you all next week. One of the best.